So you decided to make a drum and bass song, but now you're stuck on the mixing phase. It's understandable, the genre can be quite difficult to mix at times, but what if I told you it doesn't have to be? What's going on everybody, welcome back. Today I'll be going over the mixes on three of my most popular drum and bass songs. The first will be a more ambient drum and bass style song. The second, a more jungle themed drum and bass song. The third, by far my most requested song, the song that many of you probably found me through. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. I start every single one of my mixes off with the kick and sub slash bass. I like to make sure I have my low end locked in because in my opinion, it's probably the most important part of any song. So for this song, all I'm using is a soft clipper on the kick. I've already mentioned it before with this soft clipper, but this soft clipper isn't different from any other soft clipper. This is just the soft clipper I've been using for years. I just wanted to get a little bit more presence out of the kick, and this is an easy way to do it. And then after that, I used an EQ to duck out some low mids from the kick around the 250 to 300 range. This is where you can get some boxiness that I really like to scoop out, because I'm just not a fan of the way low mids sound on a lot of sounds, especially kicks. And then I scooped a little bit more around 2000 hertz. I think I did this just to get the click of the kick a little bit quieter. And then I move on to the sub. All I have here is a fruity soft limiter to sidechain the kick to the bass. I'm sidechaining it very aggressively. And then I have an EQ here just to cut out some of the high end on it. This sub that I use in this song, and I use in a lot of my songs really, has a lot of upper harmonic information, which is what really gets it to cut through the mix, but sometimes it's just a little too much, so I'm just doing a high cut around 500 hertz. Then I move on to the hi-hats, nothing really going on here. Then I move into the snare and the snare bounce. With the snare, I felt like it just resonated a little too much. I'm just trying to duck down the fundamental of the snare a little bit because it was just kind of bothering my ears a bit. The little rim shot, no EQ on it, just volume balance. Then I move on to this distorted kind of open hi-hat. I'm just cutting out all the low end on it because to get this kind of effect you have to basically just distort a kick and a hi-hat really hard. And kick is still printed into it so I'm just EQing out the kick basically. Then I move on to the pads. Not really too much going on here. The pad sounds fantastic on its own. All I'm doing is just getting rid of some low end to make sure there's no buildup and clashing with the sub. Doing the same thing on the other pad layers. A big part of what makes drum and bass so atmospheric is these lush pads that are often used in it. But a big problem that can come up when mixing the genre is a lot of these pads can have a lot of low end buildup and low mid kind of mud. So that's what you're gonna see basically on all of these EQs, just cutting out some low end, ducking down some low mids to make sure the sub and the kick are incredibly focused in the mix. Then onto this little blip sound effect, just threw a delay on it. Then after that, we got this cool little arp layer. Here I'm going in very aggressive with the EQ. I'm cutting out a lot of high end cause it had these like granular kind of artifacts in them, which sounded cool, but just didn't really fit well with the song. And then I did a low cut to get rid of this kind of droning note that the ARP had going. Now this really cool little ARP kind of sound, all I did was just slap. Nice reverb on there, and I called it a day. If you feel like your kick is just missing a little bit of presence, a little bit of that top end, what you can do is layer in another kick that has just a little bit more of that click whatever you're looking for and just eq the low end out of it which is what i did with this song 
I think this is called augmenting samples, and I think this is really a very underrated mixing tip. You only really start to see what's lacking from your sounds when you get to this mixing phase, so while this is kind of a production tip, it can also be taken as a mixing tip. And then last but not least, the lead, which has absolutely nothing on it. An incredibly simple mix, basically just cleaning out the low end and low mids from those pads and just making sure that low end is really locked in on this song. All right, guys, now next up, I'm going to be showing you guys how I mixed a jungle style drum and bass song. This is a recent one. This is one that I made and released about a week ago, and I was very happy with it. You guys were very happy with it. So, hey, why not show you guys how I mixed it? When mixing this song, I actually started with the drum break. Now, this is it without any EQ. With the first EQ, I'm just trying to duck down the ride cymbal a little bit. It kind of just was hitting my ear a little too aggressively. It kind of hurt my ears. I don't like that. And then with the second EQ, I was kind of just trying to make room for the kick and snare layer that I kind of tried to emphasize with one shots. Then I threw in the legendary rack kick because I just felt like it was perfect for the style. It has some good punch to it, but it's not overly aggressive. Then I layered in a snare that I made a while ago. I didn't end up using it on anything, so I was like, I need to use this snare. I spent mad time making it, so it's like, we have to do something with it. Super pangy. I mean, I don't know if I like it, but I used it. Then I just leveled in a crash. Then I moved right into the sub of the song. Just side chaining it. Then I moved on to the first pad where you can see I EQ'd very aggressively, cutting out everything below 150 and ducking out a little bit more low mids. And I'd say you could you could call this mid range, I guess. That isn't low mids anymore. Without it, it just feels like it really gets in the way of the sub. I also made sure to EQ this aggressively because I kind of wanted to match the same EQ curvature as the second pad, which has a lot less low end. Since I used two different pads on this song, I wanted to still make sure that they sound like cohesive. Then I added in this cool trumpet. Now I showed y'all the delay settings already in the how to make 90s jungle tutorial video, but here it is again if you didn't watch that video. No other effects on it, no EQ, nothing, just super heavily delayed. I added in a little flute with the same exact settings. Then I threw in a vocal chop that is incredibly dry. And then I also showed you guys how I made this little stutter pad accent thing. I'm going to show you guys what it sounds like without any effects on it. Say what you need. This was kind of just a layer that I threw in there and then didn't end up needing at the end of the day. So I was like, hey, let's try to make something else out of it. So I cranked OTT onto it. Say what you need. I think this was there originally before I kind of started processing it into something else, but... Say what you need pretty sure this is just the stock Valhalla vintage verb setting then I put on Valhalla shimmer kind of subtle but just a little creative effect kind of thing to just add some cool vibe to the song and now on to by far the most requested song break my fall this is the song that i made the nostalgic drum and bass video that most of you probably found me through so same thing as always started off with the kick just ducking down some of those low mids again just to get a little bit more of a scooped sound then onto the sub just side chaining the kick to the sub no eq on the sub nothing I'm gonna just speed through the drums on this song a little bit since they're more or less very similar to the first track where the big difference between the two mixes here is how I process the melodic layers. Nothing on the accent snare. 
I do have a crash in here, but very quiet because the distorted open hi-hat is kind of taking the crash's place. Same idea with the first song. And then I mixed in our little drum break to try to get that little, you know, drum and bass and jungle kind of vibe to it. And I'm just EQing out the kick. I do have another EQ that I'm automating on and on during the drum break. This is kind of just to go on during the intro to just give it a little bit of like a lo-fi vibe, I guess. Then I moved on to the pads. On this pad, I used some OTT. Just to get that little nice sparkly out of there a little more. I mean, without it, it still sounds cool, but just, you know, it sounds cooler with OTT on it, right? Now with this EQ, just trying to get rid of any low end rumble. Just felt like that low mid kind of area just started to build up a little bit throughout all these pad layers. Now we got the super epic airy pad. Same thing, just this is kind of just a safety net. If any low end starts to pop up, now the roads. Not much low end there either. Just trying to bring down the fundamental of the roads a little bit. Now the super cool like pluck sound, I don't even know. Ton of OTT on it, some delay and EQ. And then it had this like kind of like clicking sound almost as if it was like being resampled that I wanted out of there. And now on to the last sound, this like little accent thingy. Just some delay. And then this layer, I thought I would have put a tremolo effect on it, but I guess the preset just had a tremolo effect on it. And now the last bit of this is the effects. which I really didn't do anything on. It's just volume balancing other than this. Let's see without. But yeah, nothing crazy with the effects, just volume balancing. Now, after all of that, you may be wondering, what about mastering? What about mastering? Most of the time, my mastering is just fruity limiter. And then if I feel like the song is a little quiet, it can be pushed a little further. I put Pro L in, I go into the dance electronica presets, and then I go made for beats extra wide. And then I just pump the gain up until it's doing like, two to three db of gain reduction but that's if the song feels quiet 99 percent of the time i don't even do this on this last song specifically i did use ozone 9 at the time i find that ai mastering just really isn't there just yet i'll use it every now and then to see what it does i use it almost as like a second opinion on the mix really and with this song here you can see it really didn't do much so i just left it on but i would say to go by ear if you use ozone and try it on the master of one of your songs and it sounds great then keep it if it doesn't sound great and it kind of messed up your mix a little bit then you know just don't use it but i think that covers everything guys this video came out much longer than i thought it was going to be but i tried to make it as packed full of information as possible and that you're able to apply some of these tips to your own mixes that is it for this one guys i'll see y'all in the next one